Um, okay, so uh, last thing here before we get out of here, we got about 15 minutes or so. And I wanted to ask you about something that you had mentioned to me, which is the idea that maybe Warner Media has a piece of AEW. And I think this came from a Brandon Thurston uh, podcast. Not He didn't say this, but I guess there was some wonder that uh, they may they would possibly have part of the company. And the reason why we're talking about this stuff is obviously, you know, the next uh, the, the next rights fees coming up and then Discovery and Warner Media Brothers are now a combined company and there there's layoffs going on and Discovery's talked about, you know, not wanting to do scripted shows, any any new ones, so they're cutting budget and everything. So how does AEW fit into that? And then there's also this idea that maybe Warner Media has a piece of it. So what do you think about all that stuff? Yeah, I, I think this is all very interesting and and you know, th this all started by a couple, you know, the merger, pretty much. Uh, they they decided that uh, they're going to they don't want to do new programming. They're cutting back on costs. They're there are people getting released. So people started getting nervous that, OK, well, AEW has a contract coming up in 2024. Uh, what happens to AEW? Right. I don't see them getting canceled. Let me just tell you that based on every conversation mm -hmm. that I've had uh, with, you know, I know a lot of the sales guys. I know some people on the marketing team. You know, it's media. So you you know people. Some of them know. Some of them don't know. Some of it is an assumption. So you, it's very difficult. But I haven't heard anybody say, oh, yeah, they're in danger. All I've heard is their numbers are great. They're very ha satisfied. Warner, Warner Media is very satisfied with AEW, the product that they have. It's cutting edge programming. Um, you see the bicker online as to there's too much blood or they're cursing. I've heard no complaints from anybody that I know there. Maybe mm -hmm. except for the pizza cut cutter incident that that yeah. got stuff because, well, you know, the advertiser got upset more than anything else. That that's where the problem is. Uh, I've always said if you're in radio or television, you have one boss and that's the sales team, and they are mm -hmm. make or break for you. If the sales team dislikes you, they could tank you totally. Uh, right. So the sales team loves AEW. They're fine. They're, they're selling product. They're selling ads. Um, one interesting thing here is that, you know, what happens with the renegotiation of the deal? What happens with HBO Max? What happens with Ring of Honor? What happens with all the AEW properties that you have? And now that reality show, which Dave was alluding to, uh, mm -hmm. on, on Twitter the other day. So they're in, invested in AEW for sure. Are they a hundred million dollars invested in AEW when that contract comes up? I don't know. They're definitely $45 million invested and that's a bargain for them. I mean, yeah. that's a tremendous bargain for them uh, for for first run programming. That's drawing a million people a week. You know, you, do they get 65 million? Do they get 75? But the fear here is that there is nobody else that could afford them or take them. What who else is going to take AEW if, if Turner doesn't? And I think I yeah, think Warner Media and Discovery know this, <laughs> you know? Yep, it is. An, it, it, it's it's going to be a fascinating scenario. And he, so you mentioned the show and and I've mentioned this to you. I've mentioned this to a, a, a few people a few weeks ago when I was on Wrestling Observer Radio. I was telling Dave about F1, Formula One racing and how uh, they are a growing sport. And a lot of that growth is due to a Netflix show called Drive to Survive. It is a behind the scenes uh, show about the teams and about the the racers and about sponsorships and and really kind of the nitty gritty which it sounds like is what they're they're going for with this AEW show and so i said this um on wrestling observer radio and now with, with this news about this AEW show i kind of wonder if they were looking at the success of that because and, and here's the bigger picture brandon thurston had a tweet uh, brandon thurston very popular on this show today very great and guy. by the way great guy what a way. great researcher what I, I i have to put him over awesome he's, he's awesome fantastic yeah to talk to to get information he doesn't hold back you know really open uh and just really loves tv ratings <laughs> i mean <laughs> uh, he, he way more than me i mean he this is this is what he's great at uh and he's so a lot of credit wrestler well. so he's he's, yeah, uh, he's a very too. well rounded so anyways uh he had a he had a uh a tweet that showed the growth in TV ratings of the races uh, by year. And so 2018 to 2022 or so. And 
they've more than doubled in 18 to 49. And as far as the overall viewers, they've also more than doubled. And a, I think a lot of the credit goes to this TV show on Netflix because uh, I, I only know from my own kid, right, who's 22, he was telling me about the show. And I'd heard about it. I just never watched it before. But he was saying how dialed in he was to it. And he started waking up to watch these races, which majority of these races, because of where they're held, are like super early in the morning. So you're not talking about prime time viewing, getting these numbers. You're talking about like eight o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. And he was waiting. That, and then he goes, oh, by the way, they're going to do a, um, a race in Vegas and I want to go. I'm like, well, good luck. You know, that's going to be a crazy weekend. But like, that's the type you're talking about that, that demographic, like he's at the low end of that demographic. Right. And all of a sudden, this is a new sport to him because it's not anything that I told, told him about, you know, like he's a, a Warriors fan and a Giants fan and a 49ers fan because that's what we do. But this is something completely independent of me because he started watching this TV show. So I think that's fascinating. And I think it's an interesting model for AEW. Like this show has to be behind the scenes. It has to be like docu-series. It can't be roads to the top, right? It's got to be, there's got to be some emphasis on the interesting stuff that happens behind the scenes that people don't necessarily see. And in addition to getting over the big stars and getting to know these big stars a little bit more, like it's it's a challenging thing, but I, I'm thinking yeah. like, you know, HBO's Hard Knocks 10 years ago when that was must-see TV for football fans. It's not as much anymore because, you know, you're not you're not showing as much of the, you know, I'm sure the NFL doesn't want everything shown as, as and maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they didn't care as much. But like it's got to be that kind of thing where you're like appointment TV, like I got to watch this because this series is the coolest thing on television, like this Drive to Survive show. So that's my thoughts on on what that could possibly be. And what I, I hope that they get some I hope that they get some gain out of it, because I'd love to see them utilize something other than sort of traditional pro wrestling marketing or advertising. Like, let's let's go and see what else is working in sports and how we can utilize those things. Yeah, I, I think the other thing here is that you're adding another property to the AW lineup. And, you know, when you're creating that streaming service or whatever you're going to put them on, let, let's let's assume it's HBO Max, right? You're going to have to develop more than just one thing for them if they're going to have like a little section for AEW. Right now, you know, you could put all their others, you know, internet based programming on there. But really, is that going to be must see TV for most people? Probably not. They're, the Rampage numbers are going to be it. Uh, the Dynamite uh, Rampage viewership, Dynamite viewership, pay-per-views, and maybe this docuseries. I, I think, you know, they have a play. WWE does a tremendous job at these. And some of those, you know, the 24-hour series that they have or any of any of the uh, things that they do, it, it's always produced very well. And, yeah, it's, it's a little full of crap because it's WWE <laughs> and it's revisionist history, but it's still very entertaining. Yeah. And if oh. AEW could do that, they, mm -hmm. they may have something here that it's going to engage some casual people to watch it. 